so yeah, I'll, I'll be talking about uh, reusing uh, tests with uh, PyTest fixtures and subclassing. So if you, if you kind of don't know about PyTest, it's a, it's a testing framework for Python. I would almost call it like the de facto testing framework, unless you kind of know about unit tests, but I don't really like that. A uh, little about myself, I'm Adarsh. Uh, I've been working as a software engineer for about seven years professionally. Uh, been working at Vault for about eight months as a backend engineer in the merchant team. And for kind of most of my career, I've been using Python, although I've also been working with other technologies. Uh, yeah, so what do I mean by reusable here? Uh, typically, tests are quite the same uh, when you write them. You, you set things up, uh, and then you test, or, or you actually run the thing that you want to test, and then you assert uh, certain things like, uh, you want to check that the response was the right status code and you want to check that the response was the right uh, payload and so on. So that kind of makes writing tests quite boring because you're doing mostly the same thing and, and you're just repeating the, the, the same thing with like different inputs and outputs. So uh, wouldn't it be nice if you could just write the test once uh, and be able to just configure the parameters and results uh, or the expected results so you can just check with that. Um, you could do some neat things with PyTest uh, and subclassing. So uh, fixtures in general are, are pretty cool features. Uh, uh, PyTest will, well, uh, py, with PyTest, you can kind of like uh, configure what you execute based on the prefix of the name of the function or this class. Uh, and, and in a subclass, you can override a fixture and parameterize a super cool. Cool. Uh, but yeah, let me dive into this a bit uh, deeper. Um, yeah, so PyTest will only execute something uh, as a test if it has the prefix or suffix test. So in, uh, I, I'll just talk about the prefix case here, but in, anyhow, you can also imagine for the suffix. Uh, so in the, in the first case, you see that uh, in test something works, it's just like a file level uh, function and it has the prefix test. So this will be executed as a test. So if you have some asserts there, it will actually be called. And if, if they fail, they will fail. If they pass, they will pass. And PyTest will show them as a test uh, execution. Um, in, in the second case, you see that there's a um, prefix test in the class name and also in the function name. So uh, the class will be picked up by PyTest and it will execute the class uh, and it will execute all the test functions inside that class in this case, uh, it being test something works, so that, that will be executed. In, in the third case, the class doesn't have the prefix uh, test, so it, it, it won't execute that class at all. So even though there's a function in there with the, with the uh, prefix test, it, it won't be executed. So if you run this, nothing happens. Uh, and then the, in the last case, even though the class has the test prefix, the function doesn't have it. So that function is not executed as a test. If there were other functions that uh, have the test prefix, they would be, sorry, methods, but yeah, I, I use them interchangeably. Uh, uh, in a subclass, you can override a fixture, uh, which basically means that uh, if, if you define a fixture in a base class and you kind of override that in a subclass, you basically change the entire uh, fixture. So in uh, the base test case uh, implements a something fixture and uh, this test uh, checks that uh, something should be not base. Basically, this something is uh, the same as the fixture. So uh, when this te test runs, it will run the fixture before that and then get the value from here. And then this something here in this test will have the value of the fixture. So moving on to test something works class, uh, it will execute the test something works because it comes from the base test case. And uh, this is using it as a super class and then um, the fixture value is not base. So it will override the fixture value here and then this will uh, be true and this assert will work and this test will basically pass. But the next class uh, test something doesn't work. Uh, I'm not changing anything here, uh, but I'm still uh, inheriting from the base test case. So this test will execute, but the fixture value is still gonna be something here so it's base and this will fail. Um, 
parameterize is pretty cool uh, tool that comes with PyTest. Uh, you can basically call it with PyTest mark parameterize. There's cleaner ways to call this as well, but just for, for this demo, I think this is simple enough. Uh, so uh, in, in here, we test this function, which basically just squares the number. And then uh, you want to test this with uh, many different numbers and see if it works or not. And you can also imagine that the function does something more complex and like the output might be something else and you know you want to test many different cases. But rather than writing this same test several times with all the inputs, I can just uh, pass them as pa parameters here and then uh, they, they almost uh, can be used like fixture values in the test. So here you see that I have defined that I will pass in the parameter number and you can use the number here. And there's the squared which is basically the result. You can also pick that up here. And then you can uh, just assert based on these uh, parameters that come into the test from, from, from this list of parameters. Uh, so this will basically be executed as four different tests. Uh, and when PyTest does execute them, it also in the output shows what the parameter values were. So if you, if you were kind of like debugging through the test, it makes it kind of easy for you to um, check which one failed. But the thing that I was talking about before that you can write this in a more clean way, you can uh, use something called pytest.param and then you can actually annotate, annotate these uh, specific test cases with a, uh, with a name. So it's even easier to check which one failed or which one passed or something like that. Uh, so yeah, I, I drew up a contrived example to demonstrate this, uh, this pattern. Uh, there's a working sample I made and it's open source. You can check it out from that uh, repository there. Uh, so let, let me start with some, something that I didn't discuss so far. The uh, PyTest also has this cool feature of uh, conf test. Uh, this is just like a file you can define, uh, conf test.py, and you can basically put it uh, under any module. And whenever you put it in a certain module, the fixtures in, in, in this file are uh, available to all the test files, all the tests and uh, everything uh, within that module and every module under it as well. Uh, so uh, in, in the demonstration, I basically wrote up a, a fast API uh, application which just has a simple endpoint which concatenates a string and an integer. Um, so uh, for, for testing that endpoint, you basically need a test client. So I, I just uh, set up the fast API test client here. So this is basically a starlet uh, test client and this is the application. I'm importing the application and creating a test client for that and returning that. Uh, sorry about the mess on this slide, but uh, there's there's some context needed here. So uh, bear with me. So yeah, uh, uh, I usually like to use this um, uh, convention of calling uh, the setup class as the test case class, of course, you can call it anything, but uh, it's just a convention that I use. Um, I usually use these uh, classes to set up all the kind of success path uh, uh, fixtures that I need. Uh, and then also the, the test, the, the one test or the two tests or the n, n amount of tests that I don't want to rewrite subsequently. Uh, so uh, because I'm testing an endpoint here, I uh, obviously need the URL, which, which uh, I have um, uh, used as a fixture here. Uh, uh, there's authentication required. So I just uh, return a valid token here. Uh, and then there's the uh, headers to make the request. So there's a fixture for that, uh, which uh, this actually uses the auth token defined in this previous fixture. So it, it has this authorization header and uh, it's, it's using that token. Um, then then uh, uh, the next important thing, uh, because this is a get endpoint, I want to uh, uh, pass in like a query parameter. So uh, I basically defined a fixture to return the query parameters that I will be using to make the request. Uh, see that uh, I have actually used a non-fixture method here to, to get the base parameters. Uh, this is basically so that I can, I can just uh, uh, get get uh, some sort of defaults and then be able to modify them later if I override this params fixture. Uh, the next one is kind of more interesting. Uh, is the response uh, fixture? It this is the case where uh, this is the method where we actually make the get request. So it it basically pulls in everything. It pulls in the client which was defined in the contest, 
uh, it gets the URL, it gets all the headers, it, it gets the parameters, and it actually makes a request and then gets the response and then returns that. Uh, and then we get to the expectations. So here I define that in the successful case, uh, the expected status code will be 200, uh, which if I'm testing many successful cases, then it's always gonna be 200. So I just uh, can use this once, uh, write this once and use it several times. Uh, and, and let's say that uh, based on this uh, default uh, parameters that I used, uh, the expected response data will be this. And finally, to the actual test here, test response. Uh, I, I used the response fixture, so it, uh, whatever I got from client.get here will be available here. And then I get the expectations as well. And all I do is assert that the status code from the response is the expected status code and the uh, response JSON is basically the uh, expected response data. Uh, now moving on to the successful case, uh, in, in the first kind of like basic uh, response successful case, I didn't have to do anything, absolutely nothing. I, I can just write pass because I'm uh, subclassing from this uh, base class and uh, everything is set up for the test to work. So this is just gonna work without any code. Uh, moving on to a, a, a separate successful case, I, I made it so that uh, if, you, if you pass in this uh, value integer, uh, sorry, the uh, value string as, uh, like empty, it still works. It just uses some, some, uh, uh, or, or sorry, uh, I, I actually made it so that there's a there's an additional uh, string which is optional. If if you uh, don't pass that in, the response still works. But if you do pass that in, it still works. So I, I just uh, get the base params and modify the parameters here, and then assign uh, some value to this optional, and and just. Uh, say that the uh, response data is, is something that should be in this case. So it actually works without doing anything else because the uh, everything else is set up. I only needed to change a little bit of uh, configuration for the test and, and it works. I just needed to see, say that the input was gonna be a little bit different and the output is gonna be a little bit different. And even the status code is gonna be 200. So it, it, I don't even have to override that here. Um, Moving on to uh, the next case. So you probably want to check uh, if uh, you don't send in a valid token that uh, your, your uh, uh, endpoint is gonna return 400. Uh, once again, all I, all I kind of needed to do was change the expectations and the input a little bit. I didn't need to change anything else for, for the input other than sending in an invalid token, which I do here. And then I modify the expectations in a way that uh, I'm, I'm expecting a status 401 and the response is gonna be invalid token. And then finally, uh, some, something like input validation where you end up in a case where you, you, you get an unprocessable entity or a bad request or some, something like that. Here, uh, I wanted to test various inputs, uh, possible inputs where this could fail. So I, I could kind of combine PyTest parameters here uh, with, with the field value, uh, the wrong value, the error that's expected and the error type that's expected from, from past API. So in, in again, uh, for, for four additional tests, all I needed to do was uh, just tweak the input a little bit so that I would set the uh, corresponding field uh, from the parameters uh, to, to the wrong value and then uh, set the uh, expected status score to 422, four, which is unprocessable entity because the input is wrong. And then I want to test the response data as well. So I, I could just modify that based on uh, the expected error and error type values. Um, yeah, and that's about it from me. Uh, and again, please uh, feel free to go and check out the repository, play around with it and contribute if you have any new ideas as well. Uh, yeah. That's it. Any questions? Yes, there are. Great stuff, Adarsh. Uh, this is my second time seeing the presentation. It still does my head in. So <laughs> hopefully someone else. So I probably shouldn't be admitting because I'm pretty sure Samuel is here. <laughs> I shouldn't be getting fired over this. Right. Question number one by someone who is too shy to leave their name. What's the benefit of PyTest OOP versus unit test, test, test case OOP? Uh, for example, properties in the place of fixtures. Um, 
Yeah, I, I can't tell you. Uh, I haven't used unit test that much, but at least I know that PyTest has, for example, uh, some nicer features like um, uh, parameterized that I don't think unit test has. So I, I would still go with PyTest myself. Yeah, no, I can say that I do love the PyTest parameterization thing. I find it much better than the the unit test approach, which typically use 35 packages. But this is not about me talking. Right, a question by Igor. Uh, I like the approach with subclassing, but what is the benefit of using fixtures in this case? The same can be achieved with irregular methods, I believe. The only exception is that the test will be more explicit. Yeah, I, I, I suppose you could use irregular methods. Uh, I, I just like prefer this sort of um, uh, more, more kind of like a, like dependency dependency injection sort of way of doing things. Uh, you can also kind of like chain chain these fixtures without like actually doing any calls uh, in in a certain way. So like if there was fixture fixture A, fixture B, and fixture C, and fixture B depends on fixture A. So by by basically just passing in fixture A as the argument to fixture B and so and and fixture B to C. Uh, it also ensures that the fixtures will be uh, executed and in that deterministic order. So, but of course, you can do the same thing with uh, me methods as well. But I, I, I think it, this this makes it kind of cleaner. Right, right. Uh, I'm getting some glare on your screen. That or your house is haunted. Oh. Um, uh, right. So next up, we have. God, I'm gonna mispronounce your name now. Uh, Rashani. Uh, I'm sorry if I got that wrong. So PyTest can associate a fixture to test parameter and it doesn't have to be a keyword argument. Are there any gotchas with this? Uh, sorry, sorry, could you, could you repeat I'll say that this? again, sorry. Uh, so PyTest can associate a fixture to test parameter and it doesn't have to be a keyword argument. Are there any gotchas with this? Mm, uh, I, I was thinking actually in, in this, uh, uh, the last case, I, I, I hadn't tested this before. For, for example, I, I guess you're talking about parameters here, I, I hope. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so so, th so so there are four uh, uh, parameters that I'm passing into the into the uh, fixtures. I, I thought that it would be uh, I would kind of need all of them uh, to work, even if I like need to pass them in uh, to a fixture or a test or whatever uh, to to make it work. But but it it did not happen, so that um, uh, I I could just pass in field and value because I only need those here, and it still works. Good stuff. We have another two minutes for questions, but it doesn't seem like there's any more in the Q&A. Adash, thank you. You were fantastic. I still don't fully understand a lot of it. Um, I was actually wondering myself, like, a, this seems like something you sort of like imagine. Like, a, I get the basic concept of it. I wonder if your colleagues had any issues with this, like when you introduced this, uh, like a dependency injection into PyTest thing. I mean, PyTest already does some of this injection thing with um, automagical fixtures, but did you have any pushback introducing this into the workplace? Uh, well, I, I guess it, I have had mixed results uh, in, in, in <laughs> some of my teams. Uh, they, they have really liked this and kind of uh, uh, let's let's convert our entire code base into this approach and, and kind of even uh, Im improve that further if, if possible. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I guess I have also had the other side of this that it, it makes uh, things a bit too magical and uh, tests are mm, maybe not that understandable, but I I think the core thing is that if you know these features of PyTest, then it's gonna be quite easy, uh, I think, to read these and, and also uh, kind of, uh, 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 another key aspect that I forgot to mention is like this really, this approach really helps to kind of uh, extend tests. So if you really want to, uh, you add, in, in this example, say you added a new, new, uh, new, new uh, input argument uh, or a query parameter to the endpoint, uh, you don't need to do much than change uh, or add that uh, query parameter to the default payload uh, in one place and then uh, add few lines for in the uh, parameterized for all the bad cases. And, and you know, you're know you set uh, just like three or four lines of changes in, in tests, I think uh, uh, it, it, it encourages the test-driven development as well uh, because you don't have to do a lot of work before you actually start writing the good stuff like the endpoint or your service logic. <laughs> <laughs>